Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to learn how to prepare a node for SQL Server clustering setup, node 2. My previous video was about node 1. If you have watched my previous video about node 1, you can skip this video because I'm going to use same steps to prepare node 2 for our SQL Server clustering setup. So if you just landed on this video and wanted to learn that how to prepare a node for SQL Server clustering setup, then this video is going to be beneficial for you. So in this demo, particular demo, we'll be preparing TBS node 2 right here. It needs to have a static IP address. And if you have DS DSCP setting, that needs to be removed. And that node needs to have static IP address. And we'll be adding two lands, local area network. One is for external and other is for private communication private communication is also known as heartbeat and we'll be configuring external and private communication on this node um, cluster service account needs to be set up on this uh, particular node this needs to be admin on this node and we'll make sure that uh, our uh, sequels uh, our cluster service account is admin on this account next is failover clustering windows feature and distribution transaction services right here and .NET framework 3.5 windows features needs to be installed in order for us to prepare node 2 uh, for our S uh, sql server clustering setup so let's go ahead and uh, prepare node 2 here's my node 2 tbs node 2 is my host name right here and in order to make sure that uh, we have uh, two local area networks you need to go in your network right click on network and open network and sharing center and click on change adapter settings as you can see right here, I have uh, two local area networks. One is external and other is private. External is the one that is going to be uh, to set up a communication that's going to set up communication between cluster and nodes and your uh, organizational network. And private is going to set up uh, communication between just the nodes only. So let's go ahead uh, and check the configuration of external right here and I'm using IPv4 so I'm gonna select that and go to properties as you can see that uh, static IP is already configured on this node if there are DSCP setting enabled or configured on this uh, node in your case uh, it's going to be obtain IP address automatically uh, this selected and obtain DNS uh, server address automatically this would be selected in your case if DSCP setting is configured on this node but um, that needs to be removed if that's the case you need to remove that and click on use IP address and provide the static IP address right here and default gateway and your DNS setting this setting should tell you that uh, this is basically uh, the LAN that is going to communicate with your external network which is your organizational network and uh, let's go ahead and take a look on our private local area network setting if you go to the properties and again I'm using IPv4 select that go to properties notice right here that 192.168 right here is to I'm using different subnet and that is basically a requirement of uh, configuring the heartbeat or private network you cannot use the same subnet right here um, it needs to be different so I'm using two instead of one and two is IP uh, private IP address right here is subnet mask and also notice right here I did not configure any default gateway or DNS right here the reason behind that is that uh, this particular uh, network is not be going to be used uh, for um, communication with external network it is going to be used for uh, communication between the nodes that is private communication so I just want to make sure that you understand that that um, and there is it's a, a heartbeat configuration requirement that you cannot use same subnet all right next we need to make sure that um, uh, our cluster service account is configured admin on this particular node so we're gonna go ahead right click on that I'm using Windows 2012 R2 so I'm gonna go ahead and go in computer management in my case tech brothers is my domain name and cluster admin is the account that is a uh, cluster service account that I'm using so uh, whatever your cluster service account is that needs to be admin on your uh, uh, Node that you're preparing uh, to have it in your clustering setup. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and expand local users and groups go to groups double click on administrator 
and right here is it's already a part of uh, tech brothers backslash cluster admin if it's not part uh, of uh, administrator in your case you need to go ahead and click on add provide the domain uh, account name right here in my case it's cluster admin click on check and it will show it right here and all you need to do is click OK if I click OK it's gonna give me error that this account is already uh, basically in administrator group so all you need to do is click OK and it'll be part of your administrator group and that is also the requirement so next thing uh, we need to look at is the features let's go back these are the Windows feature that needs to be enabled for us to have a successful uh, configuration of this node to be added in our cluster which is failover clustering, distribution transaction, and dot network, dot, dot net framework 3.5. So let's go ahead and check that. In order to see that what is already installed of features and roles, I'm going to go ahead and open server manager. I'm using Windows 2012. If you're using Windows 2009, or uh, 2008 R2 you can go in control panel and go in programs and it'll show you basically add and remove programs um, no the programs and uh, Windows features roles and features and it'll show you basically that what uh, roles and features are already installed but if you're using Windows 2012 all you need to do is open server manager click on local uh, server and go all the way down to roles and features roles and features right here if you can see right here is a um, application role and don't let it fool you right here that dotnet framework 4.5 is higher than 3.5 because uh, .NET framework 3.5 needs to be installed if you don't install 3.5 it's going to uh, have is you you're going to fail your uh, SQL Server installation that is mandatory so uh, again I'm making sure that you uh, don't skip that part don't skip that uh, installation of dotnet framework 3.5 just because you see that 4.5 is already installed make sure that uh, 3.5 is already uh, is installed and selected when you install your windows uh, features on this server so let's go ahead and uh, add these features click on add roles and features click next click next right here this is the server that we're going to install our features and application right here let's see that uh, what application is installed distribution uh, distributed transactions that's what we need if you click on this uh, we need incoming and outgoing if you expand that distributed transactions let's go ahead and click next and up here is dotnet framework 3.5 features so we're gonna go ahead and click that and then we're gonna go ahead and click failover clustering add features alright we're ready to click next and click on restart destination server automatically if it requires you you don't have to basically if you already know that these features do, uh, doesn't require restart of your computer if you wanted to install other features before restart you don't have to click on restart destination server automatically but um, also the features in 2012.NET Framework 3.5 um, some somehow gives an error and we need to specify an alternate source path which is your installation media I'm gonna make sure that uh, I configure that if you click on that what it's looking for is in your installation media sources uh, folder and backslash SXS that is these are the folders that it's looking for when it try to install your um, .NET Framework 3.5 feature so let me make sure that uh, I have the media I'm gonna go ahead and click on I don't have the media so I'm gonna go ahead and get the media right here is my Windows 2012 so I'm gonna go ahead and mount that and this is the sources right here this this is the sources and this is SX 
s right here the folder it's looking for so in my case if I go back to my computer this is e backslash sources so I'm going to go ahead and provide that path e colon backslash sources backslash s x s and click OK just this is just to make sure that our uh, .NET Framework 3.5 uh, installation will not fail so click on install installation is going to take a little bit time so once the installation is completed I'll be back the required features are installed successfully we can go ahead and close this and go back to our local server and make sure that they are installed application server role feature is installed failover clustering right here is installed .NET Framework 3.5 feature is installed. So basically, uh, this node is ready to be added in our cluster. Uh, next, what we're going to do in next video uh, is uh, create the shared drives and present it to both of these nodes so that we can complete that task as well.